All right, now let's begin. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the basics of prop design. So what are props exactly? Any item that you see around you in your universe or the universe that you see on your screen, that is a prop. A prop can be anything. It can be the tree that you see outside your window, or it can be the creepy house down the street. It can be a plane in the sky. It can even be the weapons that your character is using in the fantasy game that you're playing right now. It's the flowers that are sitting in that flower pot on your windowsill. I think you'll get my drift now. Basically, everything is a prop. And a collection of props makes up the environment and the universe that it exists in. And you cannot have an environment without any props in it. For a moment, think about the universe that you live in and think about the universe that you would see on screen. What makes a fantasy universe different from a real universe? Take a look at the example that I have on screen right now. In front of you, you see the concept art on the left for the Disney movie Sleeping Beauty by one of my favorite artists, Ivan Earl. And on the right is a real-life picture of a castle in Bavaria, Germany. When you look at the environment in front of you in both the uh, concept art as well as the photograph, the main props that you see would be trees, a castle, and some plants, right? And in the photograph, of course, you would see the mountain and the rock, etc. In the concept work that you can see that Ivan Earl has done, he has really heightened the sense of fantasy. Everything has a very stylized feel to it and can really immerse you into that universe. Although the castle that you see on the right in the photograph is just beautiful, when you look at the concept art, you're not just given something pretty to look at. You're also being told a story. Props tell us about the universe that we live in, and each prop tells its own story. Now let's discuss the shape and design language of props. Take a look at the image that you see on screen. These are some props, some tree props that I did for a personal project of mine. I really pushed the imagery for my prop concepts and wanted to fit in this very like surreal world, which is why I made all the design language kind of feel very dreamy and out there and used fantastical colors like pink. Now I'm just going to zoom in a little and let you take a look at the props that I've created and just pay attention to the very simplistic uh, designs that I have done. You know, I just worked with very big shapes and a very textured brush. That was about it. You know, I just wanted to focus on the design and shape and make sure that it fits within the universe. Your Prop design must reflect the universe that it is created in, as well as the characters that interact with it. Now take a look at the props that I have created here on the page that you see in front of you. This is again for another personal project of mine. The universe that I had envisioned in my head was extremely colorful, of course, and there was a lot of cultural inspiration taken, you know, around Morocco and the Middle East. So I wanted to have this kind of very whimsical architecture, you know, and if you look at the prop, it's not a perfect design, right? It's a heightened reality. It You can identify that the world it that it comes from, but you can also tell that it looks a little more animated and a little more pushed further than what you would normally see in real life. Now let's just quickly take a look at the concept sketches I did for my prop. You know, I kept it very kind of clean and very sketchy. Uh, I used very simple colors as well. And it's very different, obviously, from the previous project that I did. Um, but it all it depends on your thought process and how you want to display it in your, you know, in your portfolio. I, I like to show these very sketchy drawings when I, I show my stuff because it shows you all the different ideas and shapes that I tried to use uh, that would work for this castle. In addition to your prop design reflecting the universe it is in, it must also work well with the characters that interact with it. This is very important. Um, take, for example, the image that you see in front of you right now. So this was for another personal project of mine, and the illustration is an inspiration from the Russian folklore of Baba Yaga. And if you know who she is, it's, it's actually a very fun tale. She's a witch, and she lives in a house that actually has chicken wings and chicken feet. And as somebody at the time who really enjoyed 
designing props this was a lot of fun for me i really got a lot of inspiration from this story i mean what a fun prop to create right it has big wings and an eyeball and i you know there were all these cute little skeleton heads that were everywhere it's very macabre as well as very whimsical so you know think about it when you want to design props you don't have to do just boring things like trees um, you can really do something more fun like a house that walks um, you know take it there let the let the fantasy really take you there and like I said before it is very important that this prop that this house that I created for this particular one be able to interact with the characters in that universe so you know kind of this house is very much so a part of the character that I've created Baba Yaga and it must also reflect her personality and her style as well if you take a look at the character now that you see in front of you, which is the Baba Yaga character for that house, you know, she has the same colors, she has that same very swirly type feel to it, and I've kind of tried to use as similar shapes as I could for both the prop and the character. So, you know, when you're creating your universe, when you're creating your props, it might be a good idea maybe to do the characters first so that you have a better idea of who this universe is is that you're creating it for, right? You you know who the people are and therefore you can create all the different items that will interact with those people. Now I want to talk about texture and material. If you take a look at the prop that you see in front of you, this was for another one of my own personal projects. This prop was a time machine, like an air balloon time machine, and I actually ended up modeling it in 3D. But it was very important to me that the material and the texture read clearly. I wanted the material of the balloon to have like a fabric texture to it and I really wanted all this kind of clockwork that you see to really have some you know serious shine to it so that it looked very metallic and that the light could have this very kind of iridescent glow to it and also you know I wanted it to look reflective and have a very magical feel to it almost so I really wanted to make sure that that texture was visible that it was prominent before you begin doing any kind of painting on your prop make sure that you go ahead and research the textures and materials that you will need there are so many different kinds of props and so many different surfaces for each of them that you must make sure that you find the right ones to suit your needs now I just want to quickly talk about the way I did the concept sketches for the props here. If you take a look, I just used a very thick brush pen and I just very loosely sketched out these shapes and didn't think too much about it. Afterward is when I went in there and started looking up image references for clockwork, etc. But when I was working on this in the beginning, I spent only about maybe an hour you know, doing these. And I just really let the shapes flow. I made sure to add as much diversity as I could. Now, one thing that you must make sure when you are working on your props is to make sure that you have your scale reference ready. It is very important that right from the get-go, right from the beginning, you have that scale reference so that you're able to tell how big or small your props are with reference to your characters as well as the universe that it exists in. This is very important because otherwise you can make all these things and it doesn't really look like, you know, that character could fit through the door or that the table that it's sitting on works for the height that the character is. So all of these things are very important. Make sure that you have that ready. So, so far we have covered environment, the shape and design language, we've talked about texture and materials, as well as scale. And now the final thing that we're going to talk about is photo reference and research. So for the prop that we will be designing for this particular course is going to be a house and it's going to be the dwarf house that the dwarves live in in the forest for our Snow White universe. And as you can see from all the images that I've collected, they're a very like mixed bag of fantasy looking houses and huts and houses with different levels and that are made of different textures. Some are made of brick, some are made of wood. So, you know, I tried to get a big variety of different kinds of houses that I can envision my dwarves living in. You know, I even tried picking a tree house 
you know, what if they had to climb up all the way to the top because it was easier to hide from scary humans or something, or wolves. So I'm trying to think about all these things and think about that universe that they live in and what it could look like, right? I've also looked up Gothic architecture because that universe has a very medieval feel to it. It has a very rickety, old kind of feel to it. So I wanted to make sure I add that. And another thing I'm thinking about with the house is that, you know, it might look very haphazard, maybe a little bit broken and half built together, not, not perfectly made. And, you know, I thought, what about gargoyles? That's actually a really cool Victorian motif. I don't know if, we're, you know, if that's going to work or not, but we're going to try it out because when you're in this stage of trying out different concepts for your uh, props, you want to try everything. And you never know, sometimes you can come up with a happy accident and it can be very exciting and you probably end up going with a prop that you never imagined that you would pick. Now in our next video, we are going to take all the fundamentals that we learned here and apply them in sketching and thumbnailing out our props for our Snow White universe.